Hi, I'm Brian from iWire, and today we're going to show you how to use the iWire multimeter. If you're working on your car, you should have an iWire multimeter because it's an easy way to diagnose basic problems that could cause you a headache if you don't have one. The multimeter is here to help you diagnose basic electrical problems. You can use it to test for continuity, you can test it for power, you can test it for short, lots of other basic things, but we're going to keep it simple for this one. So when you first receive your multimeter, you got to plug it in. We'll show you how to do that first. I'm right. picking COM because that's the ground side and I'm picking volts because this is volts, ohms, and hertz. So the setting, the, the reason we're picking that is it's always black is always on that one. And then depending on what we're measuring, we're doing this one, which almost everything we do is on this one. So for purposes of this video, we're only gonna have two settings we're gonna use. One is volts, and that's gonna be in DC. That's AC, you don't want that one, DC. And the other one is in ohms. That's how you're gonna test for resistance. One thing to be careful about is how you touch the wires. If you have a sealed connector like this, you're gonna to wanna to do it through the front. But if you're doing it through the front, you've gotta be careful because if you jam it in here, you're gonna push the terminals out and then you're gonna create a terminal tightness problem. You don't want that, so touch it gently. As long as you can get to the back side of the connector, so this is unsealed, you can touch the probe to the terminal on the back side, which is preferred. Before you start anything, you wanna make sure you have the proper wiring diagrams. Every year a Subaru is different, so make sure you have the ones for your car and you can find them online pretty easily. Diagrams are really important when we're doing this because we wanna know which pin to touch and which pin is power and ground so that we know what we're testing for. The first thing that we need to know about is resistance. And resistance is how well something touches something else. Yes, this is oversimplified, don't get on me, please. <laughs> the point being that resistance is how we test for continuity, which is the thing we do care about. Does one thing touch another thing? The higher resistance, the more something is in the way and less likely it is to be touching. So the first step to do this is to calibrate. Now, you're not actually calibrating, but we're gonna find out what is good resistance, and I'll show you how to do that. Every multimeter reads a little bit differently, and it depends on the probes you have. So you wanna, quote unquote, calibrate it. What is good resistance? So you're gonna take something you know that touches, and you're gonna to touch both probes on that and see what number you get. That is how you're gonna know whether or not something is making contact with something else. So we're gonna start with the battery terminal. Point one, so basically no resistance. That's great. So an example of something that may make contact but not very well might be our battery terminal to our battery bracket. That's probably because there's a little bit of rust on here, but now we see a high number. So it means they touch, but not really. So the point of this whole thing is that low is good, but you need to know what good is. So that's why we're gonna, that's why we test for the calibration. So if we know that something that touches using the probes we have is 0.5, that we know is a good resistance number. If we get a really high number, 2.2, that's really high. That means it's not touching. So now we understand the basics of resistance. That's how we generate continuity. Continuity just means does something touch something else? So we're using resistance to determine if something is, has continuity. So if you're testing a wire at two ends, you think that they touch, if you have a really high number, you know they're not touching. But if you have a low number, then you know they're touching. So I'm gonna unplug this connector. I know that black and yellow, because I looked at the diagrams, go to ground. So I'm gonna touch my probe lightly so as not to bend the terminals. And then I'm gonna touch something that's ground, the battery. And I know, based on my calculation, that this is within the margin of error it's low resistance, therefore good continuity. This wire I know doesn't touch ground. So when I do the same test, I'm gonna get a high number. That means it's not touching, which in this case is good. So you might be a little bit confused about resistance and continuity, that's okay. The basic is resistance is how we determine continuity. Low resistance means we have continuity. High resistance means we don't have continuity. So one other basic use of the multimeter is to test for voltage. Same thing like we did with the continuity 
and resistance tests we're going to do for voltage. What is good voltage on this car and this multimeter? So we're going to use the battery to do that. So we switched it to DC volts because we're using car batteries and not house power. And we're going to use the battery to do that. So we're going to put our red probe on the power side and our black probe on the ground side. And we get 12.42. That's good, good battery voltage. We should expect around 12 volts for a battery. And now we've confirmed that anything that we're testing, if we get around 12.42 on voltage, then we're in the right spot. So in this case, we're using battery power because we know that the thing that we're gonna test has 12 volts, but there are sensors that use five volts. So this is where the diagrams come into play. If you're using, if you're testing, let's say maybe a map sensor, a map sensor uses zero to five volt range. So the input side is five volts. So you won't see 12, you'll see five. And that's okay, as long as you know what you're measuring. So now we wanna make sure that our boost controller has 12 volts. So we're gonna unplug it. We're gonna make sure we know that the red wire in this case is 12 volts, but this is where the diagram comes into play. We're gonna to touch gently, not gonna jam it. And then we're gonna put the other end of the probe on ground. We should see somewhere around 12 volts. We should see a little less than the 12 volt of the battery because it's going through the internal circuitry of the car. That's okay. That's where resistance comes into play, but we're not gonna talk any more about that. <laughs> so we can also test for the five volt power we talked about. The map plug happens to also be five volts. So we're gonna unplug it. If you remember from last time, our black and yellow is ground. And in this case, black and blue is power. And we're looking and go, we have basically five volts. So we know that that's good. So in these scenarios, we know that it works. So nothing to worry about, but let's say you have a problem. So we can take this same five volt sensor and we could determine, let's say we didn't have power on it, but we didn't know whether it was a power side issue or a ground side issue. So we're gonna mix up where we pull power and ground from to isolate the variable. So our first step is to say, okay, we think that it's a five volt problem, let's check. So we're gonna put our power probe, power side of the probe on the five volt signal and we're gonna move our ground to somewhere else. And then we look and go, okay, great, we've got five volts. It's not that side of the problem. Now we're gonna switch it over to the ground side. In this case, let's say we didn't have good ground. We had a really high resistance. Then we would know that it's not grounded well. And that's how you can determine the issue is on the power side or the ground side to help you diagnose the problem. We tried to keep it really simple on this one. I know that there are gonna be some people that are gonna nitpick about continuity, resistance, and voltage. That's not the point here. What we're trying to do is how to easily diagnose something with a multimeter. So if you need more information, please let us know, but do check iWire University on our website and grab up your multimeter today.